Hello and welcome to the introduction to Microsoft Excel 2007. To begin the Excel program, click on the Start button at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. If you do not see the Excel program on the startup list, then select All Programs, go to Microsoft Office, and select Microsoft Excel. The program will then launch on screen and Microsoft Excel will open with a brand new file ready for you to begin working on. Files in Microsoft Excel are called workbooks. At the very top of the screen you will see the title bar. The title bar currently says Book 1 Microsoft Excel. To the left of the title bar is the Quick Access Toolbar. This is a new feature with the 2007 version of Excel. To the left of the Quick Access Toolbar is the Microsoft Office button. Below the title bar is the ribbon. On the ribbon we have the tabs, the Home tab, the Insert tab, the Page Layout tab, the Formulas tab, the Data tab, the Review tab, the View tab, you may or may not have the Developer tab. I will click back on the Home tab. On the Home tab, we have got the various groups of commands. Here we have the Clipboard group. And on the Clipboard group, we have the Paste, Cut, Copy and Format Painter commands. On the Font group, we have got the Font and Formatting commands. You will notice at the bottom right hand corner of some of the groups, we will have Launcher Arrows. By clicking on the Launcher Arrows, you will provoke a further list of functions and options available to you. I am currently looking at the, at the further font options that are available with a font dialog box. I will select Cancel for now. Just to the left, I have A1. This means that the active cell that is currently selected is in column A and row 1, where they intersect the create a cell. Cell addresses are always given, first of all by the column letter and then the row number. Look at the name box, it now says C1, because I am in column C and row 1. So the name box is just to the left of what we call the formula bar. The formula bar is where formulas will appear when they are inputted into the program. I will show you what a formula looks like and I will also draw your attention to the formula bar in a few moments. Just below the formula bar we've got the column letters. We've got column A, column B, column C, column D and so on. There are 256 columns available in the worksheet. Row numbers are the rows will go across and are numbered down along the left hand side. Row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4 and so on. The grid area of the screen is the principal area of working and it is where you will enter your data. On the right hand side of the screen we have got the vertical scroll bar with the arrow at the top and the arrow at the bottom and if I scroll down you can now see the letters on the left hand side changing. And if I scroll back up again by holding my mouse pointer down on the arrow and then release, I will be brought back to the top of my worksheet, back to cell A1. Underneath the grid area, we've got the sheet tabs, sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and so on. Think of these as different compartments within your file. Not strictly pages, because Sheet 1, if we were to print it out, could occupy many pages. But think of these as little separate compartments within the same file. To the left of Sheet 1, we have the Sheet tab arrows. The first one will navigate us and take us to the very first sheet in our workbook. The last one will take us and present us with the last worksheet in the workbook and the two little arrows in between will take us 
a sheet at a time in the direction they're pointing. You may wonder why these are necessary when we only have three sheets. But with Excel, you can add as many sheets as you require by working with the Excel file. To the right of the sheet tabs, we've got the horizontal scroll bar. This will enable us to scroll horizontally. And as I scroll horizontally, look at the headings changing. Look how the alphabet changes to the AA alphabet, AB, AC, and so on. Let me scroll back. Again, I will hold my mouse button down and scroll back. At the bottom of my sheet tabs, I have got the status line, which currently says in ready. I'm in ready mode. I am ready to enter my data into the cell. And of course, the very last strip down at the very bottom is my taskbar. So let me enter some data just to show you how Excel works. Here I will enter the word products and move to the cell to the right. In the cell to the right, I would like to enter Monday. The lovely thing about the Excel program, it has some built-in custom lists within it. Notice when I place my mouse pointer on the Monday cell, it is a white cross. However, if I bring my mouse pointer to the bottom right hand corner of the Monday cell, I will get a thin black cross. This is called the fill handle. By holding down my mouse button and now dragging the fill handle right across, I can release it in G1 to go as far as Saturday. The fill handle will always present me with custom lists. The built-in custom lists within Excel are days in the week, months of the year, quarter one, quarter two, and so on. However, you can build your own custom lists and save them in the Excel program. Custom lists will work in any direction. For example, if I click on Saturday, move my pointer to the bottom right hand corner of the Saturday cell and wait till the thin black cross shows up. This is the fill handle. Now hold down the mouse button and drag it in whatever direction you require. And look how Excel will fill in the rest of the days of the week in the correct order. Now to enter data in Excel, we will enter some products in Excel. So by pressing the Enter key, I am brought immediately and directly to the cell below. So if I want to enter some figures within Excel, and again, I can go in any direction I please. It's a preference. So you can either click with the mouse to move to a particular cell, press the Enter key to move directly to the cell below, or press your Tab key or right arrow key on your keyboard to move to the cell to the right. Let me put in the word Total. Excel has an automatic way of totaling columns. We can get Excel to total the figures that are currently in column B. By placing our mouse pointer on what's called the auto sum function on the editing group in the home tab, it will present us with a formula equal the sum of B2 to B5. Excel proposes the cell range and enters an automatic formula. Take a look at the formula bar. The formula bar also displays the current formula presented equal the sum of B2 to B5. This means include the cell range starting in cell B2 and include all the cells until you get to B5 and also include B5 and then sum the group. So I press enter to accept. Excel now presents me with the answer 825. Let's try that again. Click into the cell directly below Place our mouse pointer on the autosum function on the editing group and press on the autosum function. Press enter to accept. To look at this you would not know that this is a formula but by selecting the cell and taking a look at the formula bar you can see that it is the formula that appears 
rather than the result. If I use my up arrow on my keyboard to move to cell C5, you can now see the formula bar displays 345, which is known as a value. So a value will appear on the formula bar, but the result of a formula will always appear as a value in the cell and as a formula on the formula bar. Other things to observe within Excel. You will notice when I entered my text, apples, oranges, potatoes, carrots, and so on, they automatically aligned to the left-hand side of a cell. When I entered my figures, they automatically aligned on the right-hand side of the cell. Excel always treats text and figures completely differently. For example, if I entered the figure 3, 09 using the letter O instead of the figure 0, Excel will treat this as text and this now will not be calculated in my cell range. So be very careful when entering data to enter the data correctly. Thank you for watching this short video on the overview of the Microsoft Excel screen for 2007. Keep a lookout for my other videos they are called Step by Step by Miriam. Thank you.